make you feel kind. We're gonna have a good time. Let's get the meaning down. We're gonna spread being nice around. You just go right ahead because it's here and it's now. Just move every bone to a cosmic powwow. Cosmic powwow. Cosmic powwow. Hello, I'm Dr. Nancy Mrozek here at Boston Studios Community Access Television. And I'm here to talk to you second time in a series of shows I'll be doing about issues that are so important to the quality of the human life that we live on this earth while we are alive. We've already had one show and in that first show I outlined some of the negative contingencies that are bearing down so hard upon us making life less easy to live less beautiful to live, and less qualitative than it might otherwise be. And I'd like to review some of those contingencies right now. The contingencies were, for example, the escalating stress that we feel, the violence of our lives, the anger we feel, the speed and the intensity of life the fatigue we experience, the undercurrent of depression. For example, today in Boston, I know, was a very gray day. Many days in the past couple of weeks have been gray. The spring has not sprung. And it's pretty hard to keep optimistic and forward-looking without your spring and without your God-given birthright of sunshine. There are real reasons for all of these issues. There are man-made man reasons, man-made choices, man-made possibilities for change. Some other effects were the shortchanging of our young and elderly, the spending of silly time like being stuck in traffic as was the terrible situation I believe yesterday on the roadways to Boston, the environmental harm to our health which is so magnificent, and animal experimentation and animal and plant extinction. Today, we're going to talk about animals in the laboratory. A most sad, incredibly grievous situation that if you were to see it, you would probably fall down like a piece of rubber and beat yourself saying, it can't be, it can't be. Especially when you look over to your pets and all the wonderful animals on television getting so well treated in what seems to be an okay life. I also said in the first show that a very important fact in talking about everything we're going to discuss is to suspend all the commercial ways of thinking that you might have from the kinds of bits of information and bombardments that are very commercial in nature. What we're asking here is just that we think, that we use this God-given brain to think for ourselves as hard as we can, free of other people's influences, finding the truth in our own brains and our own spirits and our own soul. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. I am a behavior and neuropsychologist, and I've spent many years reading and studying many kinds of human studies, animal studies, psychology, medicine, biology, and so on. In the course of some of my graduate study, I was 
first uh, introduced to the idea of animals being in experiments in a class that I had to take, a required course of teaching conditioning to animals or conditioning them to behave in, in what are called Skinner boxes. And this seemed a little odd to me at first to be, to be training animals. Uh, wasn't something I took to very easily. Then as I moved on further into graduate school, a professor whom I liked quite well uh, came out of the laboratory one day uh, pushing a grocery cart full of bunnies with electrodes in their head. This was very stupefying and, and startling experience for me that just stopped me dead in my tracks. Uh, I also knew colleagues who talked about animals that would be chewing their legs off in the boxes in the laboratory out of boredom or frustration or from being on intervals of getting food at such variable and unpredictable times that they would do what is called an adjunctive behavior or a separate behavior in between these gnaw their feet off and so on or I knew of stories of dogs, German shepherds being experimented on, who would, who, who the researchers would, would comment to each other that when they would open the lab door, there would be feces all over the floor, sort of jovially, because, because the dogs would be so scared hearing the experimenters come that they would start defecating. All these things, were, were pretty hard to imagine and I would read studies where I learned a lot about uh, animals behavior and therefore human behavior of how they learned what they learned and why they acted like they did but then I thought well gee there are real animals in here behind what is just being called subjects even today if you read journals you will see that animals are referred to as subjects. And once, for example, I read, a, I read a, an article in a medical journal about an animal who had had his spine transected, a monkey, and was led to roam free, and of course he had no feeling all on one side, and he was basically, in the jargon, freaking out, running all over the place, hysterical, and not understanding what is wrong with half his body after such an operation. And these things became horrors to me because these were feeling creatures going through this, not, not seen for the creatures they were, but as subjects. Also, in October, in 1992, I wrote an article for a journal called Lab Animal uh, talking about recognizing animal suffering and pain and describing all the behaviors and reasons why we should be looking at what is happening to the animals in the laboratory. And this journal was is read by the international community of researchers. Now, when you look at this journal, if I might have a close-up of it, you will see a very pretty, pretty clean and pristine rat. But the rat, in fact, in a laboratory is not pristine. The rat in the laboratory, as I'm going to explain later, is suffering very hard, by and large. And please, let's not say that a rat is just a rat. Animals feel pain. They scream, they shake, they shiver, they pull away, they try to not have you do what you're doing to them. They secrete corticosteroids, stress hormones. They pant. They get very upset, they feel pain, they feel a lot of things in many ways, but here especially, we're considering the pain that they feel. So let us not look at a, a rat as a lowly, despicable creature when it comes to pain, and let us not look at a snake 
as a lowly, despicable creature or anything that lives. Everything that lives wants to live and everything that lives wants to avoid pain. I also wrote an article in a journal called Humane Innovations and Alternatives in 1991 on the issue of recognizing animal suffering and pain. My proposal to you after much soul searching thought on this subject in general, even separate from animal experimentation, is that our biggest task as human beings is to become better human beings, to look in the mirror. That is our task. And it's the task that we want to avoid at all costs. I've met people who have been in the horrific circumstances of underground Vietnam combat and carry with them this horror into their sleep, into their waking hours, but are more afraid of exploring the emotions associated with that than just keeping it closed. It's the looking at ourselves and seeing the horror, seeing the things about ourselves that we don't want to admit or that could cause us a lot of discomfort can be worse than the worst kind of combat situation we can imagine. Now, one thing that I see that is in pretty short supply today is logic. I notice this on television a lot. Maybe it's because um, things are said in sound bites things are said in commercials, have good breath, have a great day, buy these shoes, eat this, choose that, look good, be smart. Maybe that's why logic is so particularly lacking. But it's one of the things that our brain is wired to as human beings, to be very logical. And to be logical, we have to keep a lot of contradictory ideas separate and together at the same time and be able to, to understand them and appreciate them even when they seem to be at odds with each other. We can't gloss over one idea because it contradicts another. We have to put on our thinking caps and think really hard and see how a lot of things that are contradictory can be true so that we can pick the highest truth that we can know and we can become more moral human beings, that we can have a moral way of behaving, that we can go to a higher plane evolutionarily and do what is in that best positive part of ourselves rather than the worst negative part of ourselves. Now logically, animals feel pain. And I'm assuming because it's so often said to me, well, what about medicine? What about the great discoveries? What about the medical treatment that you could get because of animal research? How will we do the research? Now, this is the logical proposition. Medicine and what it can and cannot do for you, and I am an avid user of medicine when necessary, Medicine itself has a lot of parts to it that need better understanding by people that are not all peaches and cream. And yes, there are some amazing things of medicine, yet there are some things that are not so amazing about medicine. However, the fact that we get so-called knowledge, and I would, there are many meanings to the word knowledge, the fact that we get so-called knowledge from medicine is a separate issue from the, from the fact that animals feel pain in the laboratory. So let's not jump to, yeah, they feel pain, but we need the medicine. Okay, medicine could stand some criticism as well as some praise, but let's just keep that aside. Let's talk with what we've got right in front of us. When we have an animal in the laboratory, 
We have an animal in fright, in pain, often, or in, in, in a place that it would rather not be. It would rather be, like you or I, roaming free in a natural habitat. That's the immediate event. And many things, if you think about it logically, have been done for reasons. World War II was initiated for reasons. The Cambodian massacres were done for reasons. There are always reasons why we cause suffering or why we say suffering has to exist. So let us just separate the reasons and talk about the reality of an animal in the lab. An animal in the lab is an animal in fright and pain and oftentimes extraordinary suffering circumstances. So the idea is even if the world were to become utopia, and utopia is a perfect world where everything is perfect, if the world were to become utopia tomorrow, we do not want utopia on the backs of animals. We do not want 1,000 people cured over 100,000 rats and monkeys living tortured lives to get there because we're talking about the fact that animals feel pain, They're, they feel. You do something to me, I feel it. You do something to the animal, it feels it. In that respect, they are like you or I. And it's interesting, they're enough like you or I that they can be used for so-called research, but they're not enough like you or I that we would not cause them this suffering. It's very convenient. They cannot go sit in Washington, D.C. and force the Congress to pass a law. Nobody can go and speak for them very much. They certainly can't. And as Rita Marley made a record, he who feels it knows it. It's when your paws are puffed up and bleeding from the, from the toxic agent that I put in there and you get immobilized in your cage, lying there with a fever, then you might know I want to be out of this situation. I want to read to you something from the Institute of La Laboratory Animal Resources, which is under the National Research Council and uh, makes scientific and technical information on laboratory animals available to the federal government, the animal science and biomedical research communities, and to the public, and it sets down guidelines for how animals are to be cared for and used. And this is a, a copy of a, an article that came in the journal of the last issue that I just received. And in this article, in this whole journal this time, they're talking about introducing what are toxic or, or cancer-causing agents into animals so that the animal's resistance immune system will, will develop antibodies against these foreign substances and then, and then um, they will be able to use and further study this immune response to the pathogen. So here they're talking about inducing tumors in rats. Okay, and it says that when, when you can see that the abdomen where, you, where, you've, where you've started to grow the fluid and the tumor, if you, 
if you see that it's distended, that it's growing large, you can, you can make a puncture with a, with a large needle. And the things that you'll want to be looking at, you'll see the distension in order to tell if you need to, to puncture because the animal may be in distress. You'll see that, that the, the belly is swollen and that they may have difficulty walking and they may have difficulty breathing because it's hitting against their diaphragm. And they might have a hunched posture and a roughened hair coat. And they might be skinny and they might be dehydrated and they might have weight loss and they might look lousy and they might not be active, and they might have rapid breathing or irregular breathing, and pale, and th this is one level. And then they also, after they've had some of these uh, procedures, they might have pale eyes, and they might be in a state of shock, and so on. These are natural conditions that these animals very frequently come to as they have tumor growing cells put into their bodies and they're monitored for these and this is the condition that they live in as i said before if you saw it many of us who love animals and i think the majority of people by far love animals, you would probably become very sick and have to deny it. That's what happens. When things are too tough to stand, they're so sickening that we have to deny them. Well, I would like to now sing a song for you in honor of animals and to hope that this is some introduction to us to just think, think of what we are doing, regardless of medicine animals feel pain and that is the ethical event ethics is your morality you don't do in labs what you could be arrested for doing in your home now i would like to sing a song called hoochie coochie I would need a tape, please, for Hoochie Coochie. Honey, bunny, 
for listening to the song and shortly we will be concluding our show so certainly before we do conclude the show I would like to urge you to be aware and care I cannot make you care of course but I if you do care I would like you to be aware that you could write to many different places and I'd like to show at least a couple of places you might write a little note saying you don't approve of animal research. Could we see the slate of addresses please? Oh, we're waiting. Have we seen? We've seen them. Okay. So if we've seen them I love you out there. I'm trying to love you. We're all trying to love each other, so let's try to get there quicker than we're doing right now. And let's love the animals. Good night. Cosmic power, cosmic power, cosmic power.